Hey everybody, welcome to another good e-reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite versus the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch Reader with Glow Light. We're going to show you how each screen illuminates. We'll show you the ebook experience and a little bit else, but mainly this is just to demonstrate uh, the fundamental differences between both units when it comes to the Glow Light features. Peter's here, just going to document everything for you. All right. Uh, you are correct. We are in a dark room. I did not forget to take the lens cap off of the camera. So um, on the left here, we're going to turn on the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Lights, Glow Light, like so. You can see the Glow Light is on to maximum capacity. Then on the right, we're going to turn on the Kindle Paperwhite. And there you go. They are both on right now. And immediately what is uh, very apparent to us is that not only is the paper white brighter, it is also more white, whereas the Barnes & Noble is kind of soft, and it's not that bright, and it's more blue. So um, I would say so far, just looking at it, I would say the paper white has far superior um, glow light capabilities. If you look at the way that the glow light functions on these units, you can see in the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light, it's coming from the top. And you can roughly see about eight or nine uh, different LEDs that are going down. Uh, what this does is at the top here, you can see this this really white outline because that's where like the, the light is emitting from. The Kindle Paperwhite's a little bit more even. You can see that they're actually coming from the bottom, and there's roughly about four of them. But you can see that they're different sizes. Like the ones in the center look bigger than the ones on the left and right hand side. So you get a more even light distribution system. The way that the lights come at the bottom of the paperweight, it's the same way that the Kobo Glow does it. So most e-readers that are adopting uh, the illuminated front lit technology coming from the inside of the bezel are coming from the bottom now. And I think they've learned from sort of the drawbacks of the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light. We can see here, this really speaks volumes. And what we're going to do is simply look at the ebook experience. You can see here, these are the home screens. So there's a little bit of a difference. The Paperwhite has a different home screen than virtually every other edition of the Kindle line of e readers to date. Barnes & Noble Simple Touch uh, and the Simple Touch with Glow Light pretty well maintains the same type of UI here. Let's take a look at the ebook experience. So we're going to open up a book, pretty much the same book on both of these. And uh, they pretty much load instantaneously because they're very small files and there's there's nothing really too complex about them. So you see here, uh, the glow light on both are both maxed out. So we haven't changed any of the lighting or anything like that. That one's maxed out. And uh, we have the glow light on this one maxed out as well. So this is the experience of what we're looking at with max brightness. Let's check page turns. They both turn pretty much the same. Um, it's looking like they both refresh every sixth page or so. so it looks like the Kindle actually is turning pages faster. Yeah, it seems to be displaying the text quicker where it looks like, uh, oh yeah, the Barnes & Noble is a little bit behind there. Yeah, totally. Now let's look at the uh, text options we have here. Alright, so they look to be pretty much matched. Uh, we both have margins and line spacing options for each of the devices. You can see you can pretty much mi minimize it down to one column or so. Pretty much the same on the Barnes & Noble. And, and everything's being dynamically updated in real time, which is one of the benefits of like augmenting uh, margins, line spacing, fonts, and font sizes on the fly that you don't have to exit out of things. A lot of lower end e-readers kind of whenever you change something, you have to exit out of here, then the page refreshes. Uh, the nice thing about Kobo, Barnes Noble, and Amazon is everything is dynamic, which I think it's um, a little bit more user friendly, especially towards people that maybe don't have a lot of experience with the readers. Exactly. So we've seen these uh, font options many a time and uh, they're pretty much, they're, they're very customizable. So 
they they get you to where you need to go go to's are just pretty much this one has a slider bar approach this one pretty much has just a organized chapter approach to quickly navigate through the um, book instead of turning hundreds if not thousands of pages uh, we both have uh, note-taking capabilities so you can long press there we go so this one instantly defines whereas this one the Barnes and Noble you'll have to go to look up in order to get the um, uh, di dictionary definition which is just one more step but it's not really that inconvenient Speaking of dictionaries, one of the cool things that the Paperweight has that uh, the Nook doesn't is translations to other languages. So you can see we have the word wanted. We can turn it to Danish if we wanted to. Yeah. Cool. To Chinese. Let's get you to pronounce that. Uh, um, okay, uh, but you will see that um, uh, even the uh, with the amount of resolution they have on the Kindle Paperwhite, there's absolutely no problem um, displaying complex Asian characters, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and so forth. So uh, the resolution definitely is there for you to fully define what the strokes are. And speaking of resolution, the resolution on the Kindle Paperwhite is 1024 by 768, whereas the resolution on the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light is 600 by 800. So it's definitely a huge step up in terms of uh, how text is a little bit more crisper. You guys can basically see that text looks crisper on the Paperwhite than it does on the Nook Simple Touch. It does. It looks almost blurry here com in comparison. That's not the camera because we're both... Uh, we're both in the same uh, focus zone, but it, it does just side by side. It kind of embarrasses the Barnes & Noble a little bit. Okay, to be fair, the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light's been on the market for about a year, yeah. and um, the Kindle Paperwhite just came out. It really does seem like Amazon, despite the Kindle Fire HD and uh, you know 7 and 8 as well as the original uh, Kindle Fire that the company is still maintaining focus on their line of e-readers where it looks like Barnes & Noble is almost abandoning their dedicated e-reader ambitions uh, with the launch of the Nook Tablet HD and the HD Plus. Amazon is doing both tablets and e-readers and it looks like Barnes & Noble is gravitating more towards like uh, a tablet approach and they haven't really announced or refreshed their entire e-reader line Whereas Amazon's refreshed the Kindle 4th generation, they've refreshed the original Kindle Fire, they've refreshed it with the Kindle Paperwhite, and as well as debuting two new tablets. The last thing that we want to show you in this side-by-side -side comparison is the store experience, because this is really your online destination to you know, purchase content. Uh, each one of these uh, look and, and function a bit different, uh, but let's just quickly just see on how the layout and uh, how books are presented. So on the uh, Kindle Paperwhite, you press the shopping cart at the top, and uh, on the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch, you press the home button. You can't see here because we're utilizing the glow feature. I like the home button, or the upside down U, as Michael says. It's a, the N at the bottom of the Simple Touch. I think it's a good idea because I like having kind of a go-to button to display all the necessary navigation uh, keys. So uh, you press the little shopping bag there, and you're both uh, sent to the shop. So this is how it looks by default. Obviously, you can dive into each and one of these and sort of go into, you know, uh, categories and things like that. I would almost say that the, the Kindle gives you more information on the default page than the Nook does. There's like more sort of options for you to be able to do, um, which I like. You can see with the Nook that there's maybe like eight. But the Kindle is a whole lot more, and it allows you to refine your searches. I like e-reader stores that sell e-books to, um, to be able to do more with less clicks and for, to be able to sort of get to where you're going without having to click on six different sub-menus. You know, um, a lot of people are interested only in new books. Kind of a slider bar down here with, like, basically your top 25 Kindle Select books. So fundamentally different. Uh, from the store experience, Peter, which one do you like? Well, just first off, I think Barnes & Noble is doing too much with this one advertisement at the bottom. There's only three recirculating advertisements, and they do change, but it's taken up half the store. 
it, it, it goes right up to the halfway point here and you're not able to display as much as you would on the Amazon Kindle. I think the Kindle Select 25 with the slider bar here, um, how everything's just laid out properly, they're not using one thing for too many, uh, to take up too much space, I think the Kindle just displays everything a lot better. So, uh, as you can see here, we're diving into books and we're going to see how it kind of matches up. On the home screen though, I'd say the Paperwhite's a lot better. Yeah, I just wanted to show you quickly on how the, the book presentation uh, differs because this is where you're going to be a lot, you know. When you're buying a Nook or a Kindle, you're pretty well locking yourself or semi-locking yourself into the ecosystem. These are pretty well your go-to stores. So you can see uh, customer reviews on uh, the Nook Simple Touch versus the way that Amazon lays it out here. It's more like user reviews and things like that. Now this I like because as you're looking at the overview of the book, on the Kindle you gotta you gotta scroll all the way up and down to kinda see everything about this customer who's bought this, customer reviews, related titles, all that kind of thing. Whereas they have this kind of folder uh layout where you go to reviews and you see everything here. You can see editorials or customers, you go to related titles and it shows you what else people have bought. Um, more by that particular author. I think this particular book, book by book layout, I think this uh, is a lot more organized. Yeah, I like it too. Uh, with uh, the Kindle Paperwhite, you're scrolling more. One page. Yeah, and with uh, the Nook Simple Touch, it's more or less like tabbed. It's 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 like little different sub menus within a dedicated book, so it's pretty easy to go. You see, even with the Paperwhite, there's a slight delay because there's just there's so much information here. There's cover arts of books. There's all sorts of like reviews, star ratings like look how much information's here there's a lot so um and it you know you can see for yourself it's lagging whereas like with the nook um it's 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 a little bit more uh intuitive i would say so we wanted to show you the fundamental differences between uh, the Kindle Paperwhite and the Nook Simple Touch. There are uh, there are some huge things. I mean, with the Kindle Paperwhite, the light is never truly off. If anything, you just basically scroll down here to like the bottom. But when it's off t to the bottom, it's still technically on. Yeah, um, you can kind of see it here that. Uh, it, it's it's a little more. It's yeah, obviously it's hard to see, yeah. But. It's obviously more evident uh, by the naked eye. But even in a completely dark room with the 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 um, the light off, it is still kind of on. And we and we in the studio can kind of still make out what's on the page. So I think it's coming across on camera too, a like really faint. Yeah. But you could almost you could see, see like right. the screen outline. Yeah, there's no lights on in the room here because if we turn this off. We're in complete darkness. So, um, yeah, it, it's it, it's a kind of a shame that you can't turn it off entirely. But I mean, it does boast a pretty respectable two-month battery time, even with the light uh, being trickling on, I even in the lowest of um, lowest of settings. So that's still pretty impressive. Okay, so the big differences in hardware is that uh, the Nook Simple Touch has a home button, whereas uh, the Kindle did away with the home button and instead has like a unified type of, uh, you know, navigation bar here. Much akin again to web browsers, everything's pretty consistent. The settings menu does change depending on like what you're doing. Uh, they both have like web browsers and stuff. Um, so, you know, to surf the internet, you can see that our our web page loaded like super quickly. Another advantage that Barnes and Noble has over the Kindle Paperwhite uh, is that it has expandable memory. You can actually put up to 32 gigabytes of storage via micro SD card into the Barnes and Noble Nook Simple Touch with Glow. Whereas on the Kindle, you get internal storage two gigs, but you really don't get the full two. You get about 1.1.4, 1.6 gigabytes after the initial operating system is loaded on there. Dictionaries, deep bundled books, you know, all that jazz. So we'll leave it up to you guys to determine which uh, device you like better. Please comment on this video on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash a goodie reader. And uh, for the latest news, reviews, previews, and industry uh, coverage, check out our website at a goodereader.com. And for a comparison of the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite versus the Barnes Noble Simple Touch with the Glow Light, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care. It's not even text heavy, it's just text. Like, that's all you really see, and for you to get anywhere that has anything other than text, you really have to go through four or five categories until you hit a book finally, and then you can kind of dive deeper into what that book's about. But until you hit this point, 
there's there's nothing but just six categories of text for you to siphon through.